Greetings, everybody. It's Brother Stewart here. Back to Bible videos. I want to acknowledge the Lord in all my ways and may direct our path and in all things here alone get the glory. Thanking God for this opportunity. It's been a while, but we thank God for all things. By the grace of God, we'd like to um, go into this scripture here and scriptures in the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 34. I was richly blessed by reading this this morning. How God is not unrighteous to forget your works and labor of love, which are showed towards his name. Regardless of what is happening, what is going on. God is truly just. And regardless of who talk. Whoever you are with, whatever you say, whatever you do, what group you choose to align yourself up with, whatever you choose to believe, none of it matters. What do you mean, Brother Stewart? I'm about to tell you. God's word is going to be fulfilled. Every single thing that the Most High God has said is going to come to pass and be exactly like he said it in perfect, complete detail, just like how God said it. So it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what school you go to, your family background, the color of your skin, how many members you have, how much, it doesn't matter. God's word is going to, it's going to be, everything is going to be fulfilled exactly how most the most high God said it will be. Every detail. Not one drop or tittle is going to fail. Praise be to God. Second Chronicles chapter 34, beginning that verse. There's a lot to cover, but um by the grace of God, we want to go through this. And this is really encouraging. Chapter 34, beginning at verse 1. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem one and thirty years. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the ways of David his father, and declined neither to, to the right hand nor to the left. For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was yet young, he began to seek after the God of David, his father. And in the twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem from the high places and the groves and the carved images and the molten images. And they break down the altars of Balaam in his presence and the images that were on, the, on high above them. He cut down and the groves and the carved images and the molten images he break in pieces and made dust of them and strode it upon the graves of them that sacrificed unto them. And he burnt the bones of the priests upon their altars and cleansed Judah and Jerusalem. And so he did, so did he in the cities of Manasseh and Ephraim and Simeon, even unto Naphtali with their mattocks round about. And when he had broken down the altars and the groves and had beaten the graven images into powder and cut down all the idols throughout all the land of Israel, he returned to Jerusalem. I'll stop at verse seven. Glory to God. Isn't it a beautiful thing when a leader seeks after God all glory to God and he didn't matter it doesn't matter the age here this this young boy was eight years old when when he became king but that match that maturity in that that I love the detail of the script of the scripture. He said, he, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in the ways of David, his father, 
and declined neither to the right hand nor to the left. For in the eighth year of his reign, all right, let's, let's pause here. He was eight years old when he began to reign. Eight years in, for in the eighth year of his reign, so by this time, he's 16 years old. And the word of God says, while he was yet young, because he's young, 16, he's still young. You're a teenager. He began to seek after the God of David. That's very important. That's why we can't put no time frame on, on certain things with people. But that's a subject for another day. I want to stick to the lesson here. So, you know, he became king at eight years old. Eight years later into his reign, glory to God, something, he began to seek after the God of David. You know, the Lord put that in him. Because we don't do nothing of ourselves. The Most High God put that in him. If you have a desire to seek after God, you have to give God thanks for that because that didn't come of yourself. Because the flesh don't want to follow the things of God. The flesh don't want to follow the things of God. Okay, what who you are. So if you have a desire to know who the most high God is, that is a blessing. Because that ain't come from your flesh. He said, for in the eighth year of his reign, while he was yet young, he began to seek after the God of, of David, his father. And four more years later, in the twelfth year, he began to purge. So I love this because after he seek after God when he was 16 and, and out of, of David, his father, he learned, he started to understand. Hallelujah to God. He began to grow and mature even more. I said, wait a minute. Understanding and believing brings action. So from 16, now four years later, he's 20 years old. He started putting what he, his, his seeking and his understanding began to open. It caused him to act and realize that these high places, these idols, these things that's going around this, the Most High God is not pleased with this. So he was deter he, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem from all this idolatry and wickedness. Isn't it a wonderful thing when a leader seeks after God and begins to put it into action? It's a wonderful thing. Not this not just sitting there and talking. Praise God. Not just sitting there and talking, but put it into action. And he break down the altars of Balaam. All throughout. Now we're going to go back to verse 18. I mean, verse 8. Second Chronicles chapter 34 and verse 8. Now in the 18th year of his reign when he had purged the land and the house he sent Shaphan the son of Azaliah and Messiah the governor of the city and Joah the son of Johaz the recorder to repair the house of the Lord his God and from verse 9 on down they talk about the preparation the how faithful the people worked and how they had different overseers like foremen over the work of preparing the house of the Lord. And they brought money for the work. Praise God. They were united. And they had those that were instrument, skilled with instruments of, um, of music. The Levites and the scribes. Because all this is documented. Pray, and thank God is documented. And God preserves his word. That we have it written here. Glory to God for our learning. Now I want to go to verse 14. And when they brought out the money that was brought into the house of the Lord, Hilkiah, the priest, found a book of the law of the Lord given by Moses. This is awesome right here. And Hilkiah answered and said to Shaphan, the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah delivered the book to Shaphan. 
and Shaphan carried the book to the king and brought the king word back again saying, all that was committed to thy servants, they do it. And they gathered together the money that was found in the house of the Lord and delivered it into the hand of the overseers and to the hand of the workmen. Then Shaphan the scribe told the king saying, Hilkiah the priest hath given me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. Look at this. This is what I'm saying. This is what we're talking about. God's word. That's why the, the prophet Isaiah said, so shall my word be. It shall not return unto me void, but will accomplish whereto I sent it. So it doesn't matter how long ago the word of God was spoken. It doesn't matter. It's going to come to pass and someone is going to wit remember and we have on record like, wait, this is what the word of the Lord said and, it's, and the fulfillment is going to be proven regardless of who taught. So here these men, jo Josiah was doing that which is right in the sight of the Lord, tear down the groves, the high places, the images, they repairing the word of the, the house of the Lord and, and lo and behold, sort of out of nowhere, they found the book of the law that was given to Moses. Hallelujah to God. Because something, God had said something and it's going to come to pass. Glory to God. Some, God had spoken something prior and it was written down that and it was and it has to come to pass. So this book is found and he read it before the king. And in verse 19 here, Josiah is hearing the word of the law. And it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the law that he rent his clothes. At, at that time, a visible action of the effect, they would rent their clothes and sometimes pull out their hair. Many people misuse this verse in one of the prophets. He said, rend your heart, not your garments, and misuse it to justify not having to adorn themselves proper, properly. Had nothing to do. It's talking about don't tear your clothes, but tear your heart. And we're going to see why that's important because not only did he physically tear his clothes, as we read on, his heart was torn as well. Because this is why he had, it was internally representing, it outwardly showing internally what was happening to, to Josiah after hearing the words of God. He received it. His heart was receptive to what he was hearing. And the king, and, and it brought action. And the king commanded Hilkiah and Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, and Abdon, the son of Micah, and Shaphan the scribe, and Asiah, the ser a servant of the king's, saying, Go inquire of the Lord for me, and for them that are left in Israel and in Judah. Concerning the words of the book that is found, for great is the wrath of the Lord that is poured out upon us, because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord to do after all that is written in this book. That's the beauty. Josiah heard the word and like, oh, God, God has has proclaimed something against us. I need to hear from God. Hallelujah to God. As you look around in this world, look around in this world right now, you see everything that God spoke is being fulfilled. And Lord, instead of us having a, a, a tender heart, we going about all these other things and sending, Lord, we see your word being fulfilled. I need to hear from you. That's what the king said. Lord, I need to hear from God because what he is saying is, is, is happening. It's going to happen. It's coming to pass upon us. So he said, uh, I need to hear from God. 
go inquire of the Lord about what I'm reading. I need I need some more information. I need I need I need understanding. I'm hearing this, and the word is saying wrath is coming upon us. Despite all the groves that he tore down, despite all of those that, that high places, and then rebuilding the temple, God still had a word of wrath coming upon us. I need to hear from God. Verse 22. And he'll and he'll call you, and they the king, and they that the king had appointed went to Holda, the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikvath, the son of Hazra, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college, and they spake to her to that effect. So they explained to the prophetess, the, not a preacher, not a pastor, not an elder, not a bishop, not an apostle, not a deacon, not a priest. She was a prophetess. And she answered them, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, tell ye the man that sent you to me. Thus saith the Lord. She is not giving her own words. She is not preaching. She is not breaking down scripture. She is prophesying of the word of events to come to pass given to her by God because she is a prophetess. Thus saith the Lord, behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the curses that are written in the book, which they had read before the king of Judah. And out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. They had a one witness of the word that was written in the law that God was going to proclaim, proclaim, bring evil upon the land. Now they go to the prophetess and the word of the Lord came unto the prophetess proclaiming the same thing. So that's two witnesses establishing that this is going to come to pass. Praise God. Because they, and the reason, because they have forsaken me, talking about they have forsaken God and have burned incense unto other gods that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore, my wrath shall be poured out upon this place and shall not be quenched. And it could have, this is, this is, this is my God is awesome. God is just. God is holy and righteous and always will be. And he will not forget your works of righteousness, your works of love. He is not unrighteousness to he is not unrighteous to forget your works and labor of love. Because look at that. It could have stopped there. But listen to what God had a word for King Josiah. And as for the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, so shall ye, so shall, so shall ye say unto him, thus saith the Lord God of Israel concerning the words of which thou hast heard. Now this is, God gave the prophetess a word specifically for the king. Because thine heart was tender and thou didst humble thyself before God, when thou heardest his words, his, God's words, against this place and against the inhabitants thereof and humblest thyself before me and didst rend thy clothes and weep before me. I have even heard thee also, saith the Lord. Look, isn't that wonderful? That's beautiful. I told, we said it, he rent his clothes, but him renting his clothes was, was, was because what was in him. And God saw that. He said, thine heart was tender. Who can see the heart? Only God. People rent their clothes, but God know if they, they rendered it, rendered it, rendering it out of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I, you probably know the word I'm th th think of. Um, a lot of people do this in churches. Routine, but there's no substance behind it. He said, but because thine heart was tender and thou didst humble thyself before God when thou heardest his words against this place. That's where I want to be. Always want to be. 
And I admonish everyone to ask God, Lord, let our hearts be humble and tender when we hear this, hear the word, regardless of what it is, whether it's good or bad, let our heart be tender. Because we don't have a problem hearing, receiving the word when it's good and having a tender heart when it's, when it's a blessing. But is our heart tender when it's a cursing? He heard wrath. He didn't hear no good news, but his heart was, and he said, I, his heart, he, and he humbled himself and cried. Glory to God in the highs. And God said, I've heard thee. And listen, what, listen at this. In verse 28, I've heard, in ver, let me read verse 27 again. Because thine heart was tender, and thou didst humble thyself before God, when thou heardest his words against this place and against the inhabitants, inhabitants thereof, he and humbleth thy humblest thyself before me, and didst rend thy clothes and weep before me. I have even heard thee also, saith the Lord. Behold, I will gather thee to thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered to thy grave in peace. Neither shall thine eyes see all the evil that I will bring upon this place and upon the inhabitants of the same. So they brought the king word again. You listen, you listen to this. Glory to God. God telling him what I said is still going to happen because it has to. It's still going to happen. But because your heart, because you humbled yourself. My God, and you wept before me. I'm going to gather to you in your place of your fathers in peace. And your eyes is not going to see this evil that's going to come that is that I will bring. It didn't change. But be, because God is not unrighteous, he said, you know what? I'm going to take you out of this life, Josiah. I'm going to gather with your fathers in peace so your eyes don't see this evil. Glory to God. Sometimes we don't understand the planner. Sometimes we look and say, why? Why is this one taken? I, the prophet Isaiah said this. Isaiah chapter 57. Let me go there real quickly. Because whether you, man, a lot of people getting up talking a whole lot of nonsense. A lot of nonsense. About this world and what was presently going on. And you could talk all you want. God has proclaimed uh, words against this generation, against this world, and it's going to come to pass. Glory to God. You can say whatever you want. Try to try to um, prophesy all you want. Prophesy all you want. It's coming to pass. But listen to what Isaiah said in chapter 57. The righteous perish, perisheth, the righteous perisheth. And no man layeth the heart. And merciful men are taken away. None considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Some, some, we don't see death. As an escape from evil. Because God in his infinite wisdom. Know that certain things that's coming on the land. It's not good for some, some for some folk to be here. Some he has prepared for that time. We don't know who. And some he said you know. You know if you if you if you're here during this time. You may fall away. That's God's love. Glory to God. And, and people don't consider that, don't understand that. Like, why? Why? Sometimes we say, oh, this person need to be here. And God is saying, no, it's best for them not to be here. And I love this. Josiah did all those good things. You may think, and God was still going to bring all that upon the land after what Josiah did? Yes. And because Josiah did good, look what look what his blessing was. He said, "You know what? I'm going to gather you with your. I'm a bear. You're going to be buried in honor, in peace. 
And your eyes are not going to see this evil. So, praise God. And look at that. Now, continued in, back in 2 Chronicles chapter 34. And uh, beginning at verse 29. So, he brought the word back to the king of everything that the prophetess Holder had pro proclaimed by the, by the word of the Lord. Then the king sent and gathered together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of the Lord and all the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the priests and the Levites and all the people, great and small. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant that was found in the house of the Lord. See, God got an appointed time for everything. You know, I don't know how long this book was lost. I don't know. I, maybe it's, I haven't studied to see how long it was lost, but God allowed it to be found then for this king. That's not by accident. Nothing that God does is by accident. He is perfect in everything. Everything has a purpose. We may not understand it. We may not see it. We may not can't comprehend it, but glory to God in the highs. The, even now, I came here and parked in this parking lot. It wasn't raining. As soon as I parked here, it's raining. God, for a reason. I may not know, but it's, it's not by chance. Praise God. So he got it all these people and he read them all the in their ears, all the words of the book of the covenant that was found in the house of the Lord. And the king stood in his place and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and with all his soul to perform the words of the covenant which are written in this book. My God, this is awesome. This is so encouraging and refreshing to see a leader of a nation. Even though he heard that he heard that the wrath is still going to come. And God gave him a word specifically. Praise God. He, he, he said, I'm, I'm going to follow God with all my heart and all my soul. I'm going to read this to, to all you. And he caused all that were present in Jerusalem and Benjamin to stand to it. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem did according to the covenant of God, the God of their fathers. And Josiah took away all the abominations out of all the countries that pertain to the children of Israel and made all that were present in Israel and made all that were present in Israel to serve even to serve the Lord their God. And all his days, they departed not from the from following the Lord, the God of their fathers. This is why it's so important for us to stand for truth. Being a king, he's like, no, nah, ain't no option. You want to serve God. That's it. Glory <laughs> to and everybody did it during his days. During his days. And that struck me because it made me reflect on some experiences in my past when of knowing of men of God that during their ministry A lot of people were very faithful and focused and uh, willing to sacrifice. But when that minister closed his eyes, a lot of things changed. In, and as you can see that during this time, because of Josiah's commitment to the things of God, because of his tender heart, a lot of people were following God at that time because of him. 
But when that leader closed his eyes, things changed. And it makes me think that why the word of the Lord came to him about what the Lord would do for him. Because if you keep reading after the, we're going to get into, I don't want to run too fast. I just, just hold that thought. So in verse chapter 35, um, Josiah is, is um, keeps the Passover. And, you know, uh, and all the, the different positions and their duties were um, carried out, praise God. And they named the, the different ones and the, the singers of Asaph, men singers and women singers. And he prepared for the Passover, praise God. And in verse 18 of 35th, 35th chapter of Second Chronicles, it said, And there was no Passover like to that kept in Israel from the days of Samuel the prophet. Neither did all the kings of Israel keep such a Passover as Josiah kept. This man, praise God. I have to say, yes, he's a king. He was a man of God. He said this Passover was, no one did a Passover like this, like he did. Praise God. Now in verse 19, in the 18th year of the reign of Josiah, was this Passover kept. So in the 18th year is when he did all this. Now, verse 20, some years go past, some time go past because he said he reigned 31 years. So this talking about from, from 19 above, talking about in the 18th year, all this took place with the Passover. Now, fast forwarding in verse 20, after all this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, Necho, king of Egypt, came up to fight against Karshamesh, Karshamish by Euphrates and Josiah went out against him. Now remember, the Most High God said, I want to, you're going to be taken away to your fathers and you're not going to see the evil that is going to come upon the land. I don't know if Josiah forgot, but he knows the word of God is going to come to pass. Now, here we are. Necho, the king of Egypt, come up to battle. But he sent ambassadors to him. The king of Egypt sent ambassadors to him saying, what have I to do with thee, thou king of Judah? What are you doing here? I come not against thee this day. I don't have no problem with you. But against the house wherewith I have war. For God commanded me to make haste. Forbear thee from meddling with God who is with me that he destroy thee not. He what the king of Egypt said. He said, I'm on mission for God and God is with me to do this. Josiah, don't get in the way. <laughs> Glory to God in the highs. Verse 22. Nevertheless, Josiah would not turn his face from him but disguised himself that he might fight with him and hearkened not unto the words of Necho from the mouth of God and came to fight in the valley of Megiddo. Megiddo. The word of God must come to pass. This... And look, and the archers shot at King Josiah. Look, he wasn't in his royal garments because he would have stood out like, wait a minute. I told the king of Josiah, King J Judah, don't bother me. Why he out there in the battle? But the scripture detail, he disguised himself. So he could still fight. The word of God got to, God allowed this because his word got to come to pass. And the archers shot at King Josiah and the king said unto his servants, have me away for I am sore wounded. I'm hurt. I'm hurt bad. His servants therefore took him out of that chariot and put him in the second chariot that he had. And they brought him to Jerusalem and he died. 
and was buried in one of the sepulchers of his fathers. That's what God said. That's what God said. He said, you're going to be taken away in your father, with your fathers. And your, and your eyes are not going to see the evil that's going to come upon this land. And all Judah and Jerusalem mourn for Josiah. And Jeremiah lamented for Josiah. And all the singing men and the singing women spake of Josiah in their lamentations to this day. And made them an ordinance in Israel. And behold, they are written in the lamentations. Now the rest of the acts of Josiah and his goodness. According to that which was written in the law of the Lord. And his deeds first and last. Behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. God didn't forget his works. He said, you know, I'm going to take you away, bury with your fathers, and you're not going to see the evil. And people must say, well, he disobeyed God. The king said he's on mission from God. This is deep. The word of God had to be fulfilled. No matter when it is, when it was spoken, it happened exactly like God said. And look what happened afterwards. Then the people of the land took Jehoahaz, the son of Josiah, and made him king in his father's stead in Jerusalem. Jeho Jehoahaz, Jehoahaz was 20 and three years old when he began to reign. And he reigned three months in Jerusalem. Three months. And the king of Egypt put him down at Jerusalem. In other words, he died. He, was he only reigned three months. They didn't even say what type of king he was. The word of the Lord had to be fulfilled, has to be fulfilled. So then the king of then so then the king of Egypt made Eliakim his brother king over Judah. And he changed his, turned his name to Jehoiakim. And Necho took Jehoahaz his brother and carried him into Egypt. Jehoiakim was 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Against him came up Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and bound him in fetters to carry him into Babylon. Because God said he was going to bring wrath upon the land. But Josiah didn't see this. Now, then Jehoiakim did a lot of abominations. And he was gone. And here come another. Jehoiakim was eight years old, just like Josiah, when he began to reign. And he reigned three months and ten days in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. My God, three kings just like that. Two of them didn't even last four months. Two of them did evil. After Josiah, look, look, look at the nature of the king afterwards. He's gone after three months and 10 days. And here come Zedekiah was one and 20 years old when he began to reign and, and reign 11 years in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God and humbled not himself before Jeremiah the prophet speaking from the mouth of the Lord. Here, here come another king. That's four kings. Jeremiah the prophet, the man of God prophesied and he didn't humble himself. Exact opposite of Josiah. God bringing wrath upon, bringing wrath upon the land. Josiah didn't see it. And he was buried in peace. Praise God. And his acts and his deeds are recorded of all oh, glory to God. Hallelujah to God. There's so much I want to say. This, 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 it, I just pray that, that we have a tender heart when we hear the word of God. At whatever God said. Because it's going to come to pass. In the sense of you fighting. Or try to. Uh, 
put out disinformation about the scriptures. You can put out whatever you want. You know why? Because the scripture talks about people putting out disinformation. <laughs> Glory to God in eyes. Because there was a prophet in Jeremiah's day. Can't remember his name at the, at the time. Jeremiah said something by the word, mouth, of, mouth of the Lord. And another prof, false prophet said, this, said he had something from the word of the Lord bringing out disinformation. But it was proven who, who God really spoke through. So put out all the disinformation you want. Post whatever you want. Say whatever you want. Prophet lie all whatever you want. Oh, glory to God. But the word of God will be established. And it will accomplish whereto he sent it. And is not coming back void. So praise God. Pray for us. I need your prayers. In the name of Jesus Christ. Peace be unto you. Brother Stewart.